Hey, welcome to Discard. Today I've got another Game Room Tours video. This is the series where people send in pictures or videos of their game collections, and we get to take a look at those, look for cool ideas for our own game collections, but also find just cool goodies along the way. Let's take a look. First of all, I just want to thank everybody who sent in videos and pictures. I really appreciate you guys doing that. And to anybody else that's interested, there's always a link in the description to another video that explains exactly how you can send in pictures or videos of your collection to be featured in Game Room Tours. So the first Game Room comes in today from a really cool channel called Super Nick Tendo, a channel I actually watch myself and goes into depth into things such as the prices and the ever-changing market in retro video games, all the way up into the Atari VCS, which he had one of the first videos on that item. It's a really cool channel. I definitely recommend it and very chill. But him being a YouTube channel sent in this awesome video of his collection. So one of the first wide shots that he does give us gives us this nice wide layout of what exactly his game collection is today. One of the first things you can see right away is this is not a massive space to be working with, but it feels like a really big space. It feels like he's got a lot going on in here without being too over encumbered with stuff piling on top of stuff. Things feel really good. On the left hand side of this shot, you can see that he's got a lot of shelving, a lot of media style shelving. And what makes it a media style shelf is just the fact that a DVD sized case fits perfectly in it uh, and goes right up into the edge. And that's just what makes media shelves awesome. It makes it so you can just see those spines on the outside. It doesn't leave a lot of room for displaying something, say, in front of your games, in front of those spines, but it certainly makes spines look a whole lot better than if they were to be pushed deep into something like a Billy bookcase. Now on the right side of this shot, you can also see that he's got his editing rig and setup over there. He's got his computer chair, his keyboard sitting on the desk there. So clearly this is gonna be the area where his computer is and kind of a work area for his YouTube channel and his daily life. Before we get too much deeper into this room, I did wanna make a just a comment on the aesthetics of the whole place. What I think Nintendo is really going for here is kind of like a chill vibe. Like the kind of room that you would sit back in with like a, a small glass of bourbon or whiskey and kind of chill out in. That's like the kind of the overall feel I get from this space. The gray doesn't go so dark that it just makes it just a, you know, a, a black hole. A couple of the color choices that he's made throughout the room, he's got black, gray, and wood. And black, gray, and wood are just these kind of really nice beautiful tones of each other. You've got the wood on gray, looks always fantastic. Gives this really modern feel to it, but it's just, just really chill. It's a really nice place to just kind of sit back and relax and hang out. Now I'd say the biggest focal point of this whole collection is to the left side of those other shelves we were talking about, and that's this kind of wall-mounted shelf that's completely adjustable. Now these kinds of shelves are something I wanted to talk about for a long time, but it's really hard to kind of get a hold of some and then put them on a wall without, you know, damaging my walls and becoming, you know, completely committed to these. Because these are definitely a commitment in the long run. You screw these into the walls, these little bars that uh, your shelves attach to, and then it makes it so you can adjust your shelves up and down or for whatever size items you want to. It makes a really cool shelving area for whatever it is you want to display over time. So it's definitely a commitment, but at the same time, you're not committing to what you're displaying in that area. You're just committing the fact that there's shelves in that spot. But going from the bottom to the top of this little focal area, you have another shelf at the very bottom, and that's one of these, what I call Kalax units. I think it's said a different way, but I'm just kind of stuck with calling it that. But these cube style shelves are fantastic because they're just, they're huge. The inside of them I think is 13 and a quarter by 13 and a quarter inches, but you could fit some very large items. And in today's gaming and in past years gaming, there are some big box items that are out there that are just really hard to display or find areas to store. And in this case, he's used it for some old PC games, some special editions, some player's guides. This is the perfect scenario for this kind of shelf. But moving up from those, you can see he's got the Lego NES kit that went out there. This thing was way too expensive for me to grab, but man, did it draw me in. I was so stoked to hope to get one of these someday. And I probably will someday because it's just really cool idea and a really cool collaboration between Nintendo and Lego. And he's using it the way you probably should use it, and that's as a display piece in your game collection. I worry that so many people got these and kind of put them together and they just fell apart somewhere and they put them away. 
but having it out and using it at least gets you some bang for your buck when all that money you spent on this thing, you better use it as an awesome display piece. And continuing with a cool mix of things, you can go up to some mini arcades that he's got here. He's got one of these power gloves sitting there. And moving up from there, he's got a Rob, a Panasonic Q, this, this legendary GameCube item that I know a lot of people have been after. I myself have always been looking for one of these Panasonic Qs because they are just so freaking cool. That It's probably the coolest looking GameCube that exists to date outside of some really cool mods that are out there. And try not to glaze over this too much, but the rest of these shelves are just really cool figures. He's got things like Amiibo, special edition add-ons that were in big boxes like Fallout and uh, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. There's just some really cool items in here. One point that I will make is that he's taken some of these smaller items and put them up front. He's done a good job of kind of tiering the size of the items that are going out there so you can actually see them all. Now a few display ideas while we're kind of looking over this collection that I've seen. There are some really cool holders when it comes to his player guides that were in that Kalax shelf that I talked about earlier. These kind of clear acrylic holders for the player's guides. Now these serve a lot of different purposes. You can use these for a lot of different things. I've spoken about them before, but they are very cool for holding these player's guides. They hold them up straight and kind of keep everything organized and nice down there without you having to push something up against them or having like bookends that are really big holding up these player's guides. Uh, you know, that doesn't always necessarily work. In this scenario, these hold up perfectly this way and you don't even notice, like I didn't notice, that these existed until you see this kind of close up shot of the area. Now a couple other really cool vintage display ideas that he has there. There is an N64 drawer there. I have a couple of these in my game room and I use them for kind of hiding some of the things that I don't necessarily want out on display. There could be extra cords in there that I've kind of wrapped up. There can be uh, a bunch of CDs or something like that, that that I haven't quite figured out a good way of displaying. But these look great sitting on a shelf and most of the time they fit on the majority of shelves that are out there. They are kind of big. They work great in things like the Kalax units or Billy bookcases. They're just really cool. And just like that one, Back in the day, they also had some of these cool plastic Super Nintendo cartridge uh, sliding holders for uh, cartridges. I've showed these in my Super Nintendo display videos before and they are just really cool. I use them all the time. I always find a new shelf for these to go on and I really like the idea of them because not only are you displaying the edges of your cartridges like you would if you just kind of stack them on a shelf, you see those spines, etc., but you're also utilizing a really cool vintage, you know, official product from the era, which is really awesome. And a couple of the items that are throughout his collection, you can see he's got an awesome PVM sitting in his game room. And I don't think many people will, would argue with you that this is the best way to see retro video games. You can see clearly every little pixel on these. They're absolutely beautiful. If you ever see one cheap, definitely pick it up. He's also got what I believe is called a Vectrex sitting in his room out there on display. These are really cool old video games. And you can also see a big influence from things like Star Wars in his room. He's got a lot of figures, a lot of really cool masks and, and helmets and really cool things throughout the space that really show how much he really likes Star Wars and is totally into that. There's just a lot of stuff going on in this game room. I think that's really cool to kind of take your different interests and make sure to kind of put them all into your one space. So all these really cool things that you've collected or you really love, you can have them all in that space for, for you to look at and get that secondary use out of. But in the corner of the room, kind of adding to this theme that I was talking about earlier, this kind of chill theme where you sit back and have a nice bourbon in the corner. He's got this really nice chair, this super cozy Herman Miller chair sitting in the corner. Now I'm not sure if this was Herman Miller or if this was the the uh, the later copy of the Herman Miller. I believe it's the actual Herman Miller and uh, you can check his channel for that. He actually has a video on it. But it's an awesome chair to sit back, in my opinion, and just chill out. Um, in this case, it looks like he's got a laptop all hooked up and ready to be used in that scenario. Looks like a, just a really nice, spot to chill out in your game collection, play a few games, get a little bit of work down, and maybe just hang out. And the last thing that I really wanted to say about Super Nintendo's game collection and game room as a whole is he just has a really cool vibe about him. He seems to know what he wants, um, especially with the artwork that he utilizes throughout his collection. He's got a really nice balance between kind of modern video game art and the retro 
art that we all love and know. He's done a really good job of kind of spreading things out and making specific areas for the artwork to be. And I think it looks really nice. So shout out to Super Nintendo. Thank you for sending in stuff, taking the time to do that. I really appreciate it. Really awesome collection overall. I am in love with it. I can't wait for you to ship everything from it to my house. Now moving from Super Nintendo and going into what I will refer to as the Jump Collection. This was sent in from an email address that had one of the first words was Jump and one of the wide shot pictures that he sent in, you can see that the majority of his shelving units are these small little Kalax units, these four by four cube style shelves are going to be the basis of the entire collection. He's utilized these throughout the entire room on most of the walls and use them for displaying most of his stuff. Another cool feature of this wide shot is you can see he's got some stools throughout the room. So he's got a few different places to sit depending on how many people are in there. It looks like three or, or four different stools and a chair are sitting in there. So multiple people could be in here playing on different systems and doing different things at the same time. Pretty cool feature. I like the idea of having stools as opposed to a bunch of kind of bulky chairs kind of taking up the smaller space that you have there. It's a really good idea. And you can see a couple of those stools are around probably one of the bigger focal points of his game collection. And that's the Ninja Turtles cabinet here, the arcade one up Ninja Turtles arcade game sitting here. I always wanted one of these. One day I will get my hands on one. It's the only arcade cabinet that I want, period. Um, either that or uh, maybe an MVS in the future, but it is absolutely beautiful sitting in this space. It also looks like it has more than enough room to breathe and to actually be used. I've seen these before kind of mashed into the corners of rooms and you'd probably be like pushing up against a shelf or, or somewhere else, but this is in a really nice wide open zone and you can see those stools are ready to rock whenever you want to play Ninja Turtles. Now, as you zoom in, you can see the display factor start to hit you in the face. This first shelf on the left-hand side of the Ninja Turtles cabinet is just packed full of display ideas that anyone can use for their game collection. And I think the best way to kind of talk about this is that this is modular. This is, this is uh, one of my favorite things to do in a game collection is take a normal old shelf and just kind of turn it into a modular form of its existence. Now the top of that shelf, you can see he's got a bunch of displays on top of it just to start with. He's got the Mario figure there holding his Nintendo Switch, as well as to the right of that, a wireless Super Nintendo controller being charged. And that looks like it's sitting on another stand, possibly a Nintendo Switch stand. I'm not exactly sure. If you do watch this video, let me know in below what, what that stand is. I'm curious as to all these stands that are on the top of the shelf and where they come from. There's a Game & Watch in the back as well on a rose-colored gaming acrylic stand. You can't go wrong with rose-colored gaming. They make such awesome stuff. And then to the right of that, a Game Boy Advance SP that's also charging, sitting on another stand as well. And move, quickly moving down from there, you can see he's got a, a little three drawer set up down there for putting a few different items in there. You can't quite see into this one, so I imagine he puts stuff in there that he doesn't necessarily want to have out on display. But other things on there, you have another rose-colored gaming stand for his Game Boy. One of the really cool things is a Devoom D2. And these are just awesome. I love Devoom products overall. They are a fantastic product that is way too good for, for what it is. To the right of that, he's got a another one of those clear boxes that I really want to find out where it comes from. And it's got a, another Game Boy Advance cartridge in there on a rose-colored gaming stand. And behind that, some nice cardboard boxes for for some of those games. It's it's just really nice. I love these clear boxes. I'm, I'm gonna steal this idea from you, 100%. And then getting into one of the most modular areas and kind of a really good uh, example of what I mean by modular. I mean, we've, we're going shelf to shelf here and every shelf feels different. It feels like it has its own existence, its own, its own little setup and its own way it's supposed to be set up. And that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about modular. But if you look at the lower left-hand corner here, you can see he's got this kind of this uh, checkerboard of uh, his Nintendo Switch games, as well as some 3DS games there. And they're kind of sitting in their own little trays, but they take up that entire space and make it look like it's supposed to be that way. In the last quarter of this shelf, there is a bunch of Game Boy boxes sitting here on a tiered style display. Now, looking at the right side of the arcade cabinet, you have another cube style shelf. I, I do imagine that this one is a Kalax unit and inside of it, it's got a bunch of video game goodies, but you can also see a little bit of love for a little bit, a lot of love for these little cars that are out there. Now, I don't want to offend anybody and say that these are Hot Wheels or, or anything like that, but 
These little cars are awesome. I know a lot of people like to collect them. A lot of people had them in their childhood. I still have like 25 of these bad boys from when I was a kid. So it's really cool to see some of them out there on display. And speaking of those little cars, you can see on the wall above this shelf, there is this really cool cabinet. Now I've actually purchased this cabinet in the past when I was doing a Game Boy display video and found out it works fantastic for Game Boy Advance cartridges and displaying them inside of it. So not only could you get this for your cars, you could also use it for your Game Boy Advance cartridges as well. And it has little clear plastic doors that close and, and keep the dust off your stuff. On top of the shelf, he's got a bigger car sitting there on display. Probably really loves this vehicle so he can see it all the time. Below that, he's got some Game Boy cartridges in their cases, protecting those, making sure to take care of them. You can clearly see that he really wants to keep those safe. And moving down from there, you could just see a bunch of handheld systems that are on displays from Rose Colored Gaming or otherwise. He's got a couple trays down there. You can find these from a bunch of different companies that are out there to hold a bunch of your loose Game Boy games and give them this kind of orderly feel to them. I really recommend taking a look into those. You can find a lot of them on Etsy as well and certainly 3D print them if you know somebody with a 3D printer. These trays are readily available on Thingiverse. But just kind of loosely looking over this shelving unit, you can see a lot of art. You can see a lot of items on display. Nothing's kind of just thrown to the side on its back, kind of thrown to the edge of something, shoved in there, etc. It's all kind of well thought out, very modular design that he has here with his collection and kind of making sure everything has a display unit for it. So many little displays. There's a lot of time and effort he's put into finding the actual display for the item and then utilizing that in his shelving units. And that's really awesome. Now the next wide shot shows a kind of a bigger space of this room. You can see that there's two CRT TVs in this room, which gives more credence to those those nice stools that he has throughout his room so that more people can be playing games at the same time. He's utilizing uh, some wall art there. He's got this big Super Nintendo sign sitting above one of his CRTs, as well as a giant Super Nintendo cartridge. They had these a while back. You could get one of these with a t-shirt inside of it. I love them as these little display items to put on your wall, super cool. Now to the right of the nice CRT, he's got a bunch of his Super Nintendo games. I think these are in a couple trays that he's gotten as well. It just makes it look overall well organized and nice. And then down below that, as you go through his collection, you can see he's got uh, figures and plushies and a bunch of different items displayed on this shelf. There's one item at the very bottom that I've always been very interested in, and it's this kind of holder for Super Nintendo cartridges, I believe. It has a, a kind of a gray front to it. Looks like a Super Nintendo cartridge itself, and they made these back in the day, I believe, just for holding Super Nintendo cartridges. And then going to the right wall of this area, you can see another CRT TV, that second one that we were talking about, and another one of these Kalax units that holds a bunch of different items in it. I think he's got some PlayStation games, an old PS1, a GameCube, and just to the right of that, there's another little two square cube style shelf there as well. And at the very bottom of that, you can see there's a Tails figure in there. That's one of those Cable Guys holders that uh, you can use to charge phones, put your Switch on, you can put cartridges in their hands. These are just really cool old displays, these character style displays. I personally collect them. Um, because I just love finding these cool little pieces of history, even if they're modern and just came out. And I definitely wouldn't call this collection overall a small collection, because there's a ton of cartridges, a ton of games, and things throughout here. If you start counting everything up, you get into some big numbers. But it does feel like a smaller game space. But if you kind of look at the size of this space, it's a small game room, but it certainly doesn't feel that way. He's got bright walls, he's got art kind of spaced out, it feels big in here. I bet four or five people could be in this room and not have an issue and just sit back and play some video games. It's just another really good example of what you can do with a smaller space and really utilizing display to your advantage to kind of change up how a space feels. So props to them for just making an awesome space. Now moving into the next game collection, this one comes in from Chelsea. This game collection and just overall setup is for them and their significant other. They utilize this space to play video games together. I really relate to this because I play a lot of video games with my wife, either when we are trading off uh, games or we're playing co-op games together. It's an awesome experience to have somebody else in your life that really likes video games. But you can definitely tell this setup is built to have two people playing here. Just a really nice setup with a big TV and this first area just looks fantastic. And one of the things that, that draws 
my eye in first is the Cubone skull sitting on top of the shelf there underneath the TV. For some reason, that's what I look at because I just love Cubone at this point. I made my own little uh, Cubone skull. I 3D printed it and modeled it myself. And I just, ever since I did that, I have a deep love for Cubone and his story as well. So that's just the first thing that pokes into my brain. But there's a giant TV on top of that as well that has some nice backlighting to it. Gives a really nice effect off the walls, especially at night when you're gonna be in this space kind of looking at this TV. Having that little backlight does give you a little bit of eye relief so it's not burning your pupils off. But to look at the shelving units that they have here, they have an eight cube shelving unit underneath of this, another cube style shelf, a Kalax style shelf. And then on the right and the left, they've used these kind of these one uh, cube high shelves that are four cubes deep and turn them on their side to make these kind of towers on each side, which makes a really cool display area for some figures. And clearly they understood that because they have some mega big figures from first four figures and special editions, some, some PlayStation exclusive uh, figures in there that just look fantastic. They've really utilized these, these shelves perfectly for, for what they could be used for. Now looking at the eight cube shelf that they have underneath their TV, looks like they're utilizing that for their systems themselves. Now these cube style shelves are fantastic for systems because they have an open back design. You don't have to route your cord any which way. I mean, your biggest issue is going to be those cords showing. So if you route them down kind of the spines of the back of these shelves, you can kind of hide them that way and not be able to see them from the front when you're sitting on your couch. But this is a great way to play those games, have those consoles ready to rock, and just have them look great at the same time. On top of that shelf, there's of course the Cubone uh, skull that I talked about before, and a bunch of figures and some cool displays. There's another cable guy there that seems to be holding, uh, what was it, a PS Vita or PSP? And a couple light up items. There is a Devoom Pixu there, I believe is what this is. And uh, again, Devoom makes fantastic stuff. and. Clearly you can pick and choose whatever artwork you want to have on there. So it's one of those great things to put in a place that's gonna always be in front of you because you can always change it and you'll never get, it never gets old. Now on the opposite side of the room, you can imagine that there is a giant couch here. This looks like one of the comfiest couches in the world. I can imagine just being sucked into the fold of one of these couches into this infinite universe of comfortability. But you can see they didn't just leave it as a couch. They threw some cool uh, game related pillows on there. You've got the blue shell up there and some very realistic dog plushies that are sitting on this shelf as well. They even had some, some paintings done of these plushies. These things are hyper realistic and probably very valuable. And to the left and right of this, you have another one of those shelves that they've kind of turned on end to make these kind of towers of, of great places to put their figures. Some more first four figures. There's a really cool Spyro figure on the right side, as well as a Crash Bandicoot figure on the left side. And really, as you look through these shelves, you can see that that potential for somebody to be walking into this room and just spend an hour kind of poking around and looking at all the different figures and items that they have in their collection. And going to take a look at another wall of this room, you can begin to see that this used to be a bedroom with a closet in it, because this closet has been utilized as a place to store and display video games and accessories and figures and you name it. I really like this idea. I've seen this several times, especially throughout this series where people have turned their closets into pretty much a, a shelving unit for the room, completely leaving it open and putting shelves inside or doing custom shelves inside just to make it a really good space for displaying. Now, a couple things that I noticed looking through this shelving area is that there is a cool tiered display for the N64 cartridges that they have back there as well as Super Nintendo cartridges. This looks really good just having them in a tiered display so you can see the artwork of the game and get that secondary use out of them. Down on the left and lower portion of that shelf, you can find a uh, set of Game Boy cartridges that have also been displayed out there. Rose Color Gaming makes some really cool little acrylic displays for every single Pokemon game to date, at least on the Game Boy side. Uh, they're all different colors depending on what the color of the cartridge was at the time and it's just really cool to see them all out there. They all can kind of link up and attach to each other so there's this kind of puzzle aspect of it but uh, it's really nice to see that. I don't see it that often that people actually go and get those specific displays to utilize in their collection. And just a couple shelves underneath of that, they have some steel books that they wanted to display. So they've kind of laid them on top of each other, showing off about half of the art of each of one of their steel books. And this is a really good way of kind of taking up a space and, and showing off that artwork on those steel books. Steel books are kind of a a crazy thing because they're kind of ugly if you're just looking at the spines of them. A lot of them don't even have the names of the games on the spines, which I think is 
is terrible. And moving from the really cool display closet that they've got hooked up there to this giant arcade machine. Um, in the email, they also talked about this Mega Cade being one of the coolest parts of their collection. They highly recommend it, especially for people who are playing with other people. This is absolutely immense. This is the big chungus in this collection for sure. I mean, just from a visual standpoint, there is tons of video game art from the bottom to the top. It looks really well lit and bright. I mean, all the way from the, the marquee at the top down to the bottom, everything's lit up and very colorful. It looks like it takes up kind of a significant amount of space. So if you didn't have a giant collection, this may not be the, the perfect uh, uh, item for that, but certainly an awesome thing. I definitely want an arcade for my collection because boy, am I jealous of you guys. I'm so freaking jealous. Why am I so jealous? But overall, I think Chelsea's collection is another really good example of kind of looking at your environment and figuring out the best way to display things in it, getting that use out of your games, as opposed to just shoving stuff in a closet, closing it up and throwing your cartridge into your, your system. They've taken the time to kind of utilize things like their closet, find out the perfect spaces for their bigger figures that they have, do some nice backlighting features so that when all the lights are off in the room, everything is still lit and looks good. And even going as far as to get those really high quality plushies that they have on their couch, I highly recommend those. Um, if you guys do have a link for those, let me know in the comments below where I can get those incredibly awesome plushies. But if you're looking for more ways of displaying things in your game collection, we do have a playlist available for that. So go seek that out. Look at all those different ideas that are out there. You can even search the item that you're looking to display and type in discard after it. More than likely, the first video that pops up is gonna be a way of displaying that item. So go and take a look at that. Let people know that there's a display channel out there that's dedicated to this field. I really love doing it. It's an awesome thing. And you guys viewing, liking, and taking a look at the video is just awesome. I really appreciate it. Helps drive this forward. Helps me get more display ideas and push further into this field. Outside of that, I just appreciate you guys. Uh, if you like the video, please leave a like. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe. But outside of that, collect what you love.